Hi, this is Rotating Translating Ellipse with Parametric Equations. In the process of doing our project with, uh, with the racetrack, some people have come across trying to fit an ellipse and they were able to rotate. They looked up on the internet how to rotate a rectangular equation and uh, turn an ellipse at a little bit of an angle. What we want to try to do is take that and then turn that into a parametric equation for ourselves. And so that's what we're going to be doing here. And if we start off, first of all, we know that the parametric equation for a circle, it comes from just our cosine. Cosine is d uh, defined to be x over r, so x is equal to r cosine t, where r is the radius. And the y is uh, equal to r sine of t because of the same reason. Th this set is our parametric equation for a circle. Then if we want to translate our circle, we can also go plus h plus k, let me make that a k, uh, for each one of those respectively, where hk is the center. So we can translate as well. Now if we move on to an ellipse, an ellipse is very similar. This r is the same for both x and y. So if it's an ellipse, we're just going to stretch it however far on our respective axes. So this one would be x is equal to a cosine t, where the a is going to be one half the distance on the axis for the x, and then the y, this b would be one half the distance for uh, on the y. So if I drew this out, if I had one that was long, in this case, b would be greater than a, it doesn't look like much like an ellipse, but this b, this value right here would be a b. So overall the major axes would be 2b in length. Now what we can do with this one as well is we can translate this too. And if I want a different center I could do plus h and plus k. We don't do minus because this is the x value. We're adding the h uh, to whatever it is depending upon if h is positive or negative. Okay so that gives us our center and that gives us just a regular ellipse in parametric form. Now what we want to try to do is we want to try to tilt this uh, a certain angle measurement, whichever angle measurement you want to deal with, and tilt it as we go along. This will help us fit uh, our ellipse to our racetrack. So we go back to our rotational matrix that we learned earlier in the year. And this one right here is the rotational matrix that I use. Sometimes you'll see in textbooks, some of this might be in a little bit different order. That's because they take this matrix times the XY coordinates in a column form. I put the XY coordinates first, and then these would be my resultant uh, values that I have. And so if I start off with an ellipse, and with the ellipse, I'm going to have the A cosine T that would be my x value. And then I'm also going to have my y value, which would be b sine of t. So that's equivalent to my x and y. And what I want to do is I want to try to rotate a certain angle measurement. So this would be cosine b, sine of b, and then negative sine of b cosine b. And then the result will give us whatever, uh, it will give us the parametric equations for the rotation of this. So if I multiply this out, this cosine t is much different than this cosine of b. b is going to be my rotational angle, t is going to be the time that will draw out my ellipse. And so they're different. So if I multiply these out, I get a cosine t times cosine b. If you forget your matrix multiplication, go look it up again. And then I'm going to take the b sine and times it by this. And so it would be negative b sine of t sine of b. Okay? And that's equal to my, I wrote that poorly, equal to my x prime. That's my new equation. So this is going to be equal to my x prime y prime. And so if I do a similar thing to find my y prime, that's going to be in my second row. So I'm going to take the first term here. So this would be a cosine of t times the sine of b. 
and then it's going to go plus b sine of t cosine of b. That would be equal to the y prime. Now, if you notice, I didn't put the plus h and k in here. And I did try that first. That was my first experiment. I put the plus h plus k in here, and it actually translated my um, ellipse in a fashion that's different than what I wrote up here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these, and then I could go ahead and just add the h and k at the end. And this would translate it as well. This way I like better than to put it in there. So that's why I did that. Okay, so I got some equations. Now what we should do is go experiment. And let's try some things with autograph. Okay, uh, before I get to the graph though, I, I'm running into a little bit of trouble here because um, I got a B and a B here and I don't like that. So I'm going to change this to a just a lowercase c because with an autograph, um, I can't use the uppercase B. So I'm just going to call that C for that angle measurement of the rotation. All right, so if I type this in to autograph, well, first of all, I already got it typed in there, but let's type in just the regular ellipse with some different attributes. So if I go X equals 2 cosine T, and then I got to go uh, colon, or I'm sorry, comma, y equals 3 sine of t. So if I graph this, there's my ellipse. Now, if you look down here, this is my ellipse translated to the point where the center is. Uh, this would be right 1 and down 2. And so if I want to match that up with my same equation that I just had, it would be right 1, so plus 1 and then minus 2. So that's my h and that's my k. So that's my new center. This one should go right over the purple. There it is. Okay, now I've already typed in this one. It's just too long to get in there, but you can pause this and type this in. With the constants in there, the h and k, and the c as well. So I can vary those and see what happens. So if I take this now, uh, I can use the constant controller here, and I want to change my values of C. And this value here, I put in pi divided by 8. Why? Well, because I want something that will rotate it evenly, and pi over 8 seem as good as any. <laughs> That's probably pretty much why. And so if I take this, and I hit this up, this C value now is going to increase by a pi over 8 value. Now if you look at this, now I rotate it in a counterclockwise direction by pi over 8 units. And if I keep on going now, there's pi over 2. And I keep on going, I can rotate it however I want, and I can get back to where I started from by rotating it by 3 pi over, um, I'm sorry, pi. And so this thing just goes right back to where it started. For, uh, not exactly. It just went halfway around, didn't it? It's because this is pi. And if I keep on going, I can keep on rotating. And it will go around another pi. So two pi units. Now it's back to where it started from. And I want to pause this for a minute. Then with my autograph here too, what I, I have in there, I have different constants, the H and K. So if I need to change those, I can do that too. So here's uh, H being 1 right now. I can go up and just shift it over. So it's just changing my H, which is my X coordinate, and it's plus H, and it changes the X here by this H value. So I can just keep on going and moving that. And go back. And then likewise, I can do that with the K. Change that a little bit. That will move it up. My step is really high here, so I can change that to point 0.1. And so we'll go just by a little bit. Now, if I go back and do C again, we'll see if we can still rotate. I'll go backwards. Yep, sure enough. I can still rotate that with the H and K in there. And so my initial problem that I told you about, 
when I did it the wrong way before, it turned out okay. All right, so this is one way to move an ellipse, translate it, that would be the appropriate word mathematically, and also to rotate an ellipse with parametric equations. Thanks. I hope you're having fun with your project.